Good morning. In today's options lesson, we're going to follow up with my XLK credit put spread that was done on September 22nd, 2020. Before I start today's lesson, I'd like to thank my Patreon members for making this video possible. And now I present to you our lesson for today. Today's video is part two of this series. It is also the last one of this series. If you're a Patreon member and you wanted to review part one, just log into your Patreon account and go back to September 22nd, 2020, and you will see a link that will take you directly to part one. You could also go to Patreon and search for any of these keywords. In front of us is the picture of my opening trade on September 22nd, 2020. This is a credit put spread, which is also kind of a semi-bullish strategy. The ticker symbol is XLK, which is the technology sector ETF. I sold to open one October 30th, 2020 put option with a strike price of $100. And at the same time, I purchased a long put with a strike price of $65. So this vertical spread was $35 wide, and therefore it required $3,500 of buying power. At the time that I placed the trade, my short put gave me a credit of $1.20, and my long put cost me $0.04 cents to purchase. So the spread gave me a net credit of $1.16. For one contract, I received $116. Because this is a net credit trade, my maximum profit at expiration is simply the original credit of $116. In order for this trade to be 100% successful at expiration, XLK needs to close above my short strike of $100. In the part one video, I explained all the different ways that I could have managed this trade, including breaking apart the spread and closing the different legs at different times. So I do encourage you to go back and review part one so you can get an idea of how to break apart a vertical put spread. On October 16, 2020, which was 14 days before expiration, I had the opportunity to close out the entire spread for only three cents or three dollars for one contract. And that's exactly what I did. So you can see here that I spent seven cents to buy back my short put, but notice something interesting here. Because my long put was so far out of the money at the time that I purchased it, it didn't decay. So that means I was able to sell to close my long put for the same price at which I bought it. So when I bought it, I paid four cents, and several weeks later, I was still able to recoup 100% of the cost of my long put. And so for that reason, I decided not to break apart my vertical spread. I decided to just keep it together so I would have to spend only three cents instead of seven cents to close out the spread. At the time that I closed the trade on October 16, I could tell that there was no way XLK was going to go all the way down to $65 in the next 14 days. And so I didn't really want to just sacrifice the $4 of my long put. And that is the reason I decided to sell to close it on October 16. So now let's jump over to the charts and see what has happened to XLK between September 22nd and October 16. This is a one year daily chart of XLK. And I am using the trading platform called Think or Swim, which is part of TD Ameritrade. So let's go back and take a look at the two dates of my trade. September 22nd is the date that I placed my semi bullish trade, and that was the date when XLK was oversold, right down here at the bottom of the stochastics. And up here at the top, we can see that. On September 22nd, XLK was right at the moving average. 
the 50-day moving average. Right after I placed the trade, XLK went down just a tad and then it took off and started rising. On October 16, which was right there, that's when I had the chance to buy back the entire spread for only three cents. Notice that the slow stochastics had hit a peak right there on the 13th and then on the 16th it had already turned around to go back down and this is the reason I decided to close out my bullish trade and protect my profits and protect my capital. So do notice that once it hit the overbought region, XLK pretty much went straight down. And on October 30th, which was the expiration date of my spread, XLK closed at 110.86, which means that if I had just left alone my spread, the trade would still have been fine. But why even take that risk? It only cost me three cents or three dollars to close out my trade and take my profits and not worry about something like this. And in case you are wondering, that long put that I had closed for four cents, it did not rise in price as XLK was dropping because the straight price was $65 and we were close to expiration and the option was pretty far out of the money. So even though XLK was dropping, the 65 long put did not rise in price. So I did the right thing by selling to close it for four cents as part of my spread. So notice that once XLK hit the oversold region, it went back up again. So after I closed my trade on October 16, I just kind of waited until XLK was oversold again and then I went right back in and put on another semi bullish trade. So my net profit on this trade after commissions was $110.34. I had placed this trade in a margin account and the amount of buying power that I needed was $531. That means the return on my capital is $110.34 divided by the margin requirement of 531 times 100, 20%, approximately 20% return on my capital in about three weeks. So that's uh, that was a very good trade and I'm happy with it. Thank you for watching.